The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwaji Bola Tinubu, has finally picked a former governor of Borono State, Senator Kashim Shetima, as his substantive running mate for the 2023 presidential election. Ashiwaji Tinubu made this announcement while addressing journalists after meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari in Darak at Sina State during his the Salah homage. Now, before we get to our next discussion, uh, let's uh, bring up this report by TVC News, Ola Awakong. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu arrived in Katsina State to pay Salah homage to President Muhammadu Buhari in his hometown in Daura. He is received by Governor Aminu Masari and other chieftains of the party in the state. They moved straight to Daura, where President Muhammadu Buhari received the APC presidential candidate and his entourage, comprising Senator Lamile Solomon, James Faleke, Minister of Youth and Sport, Sunday Dari, and other party chieftains. After the closed door meeting, Ashiwaju Tinubu publicly laid to rest the question of his substantive running mate as a picked former governor of Bornu State, Kashim Shetima, while the placeholder, Kabiru Masari's withdrawal, was mentioned. The only one that uh, was in place as a replacement we thought today and uh, there be already an announcement to to replace him fully with a substantive uh, you know a substantive one. Kashim Shetima. I have not discussed with him. I've disclosed it to you since I've disclosed it to the president. He Competent, capable, reliable, and able. Ashiwaju Tinobu is optimistic that APC will win in the 2023 presidential election. Inshallah, we're going to win. Why are you so confident? Uh, because we are a progressive party. We have uh, the focus on Nigerian problems. Uh, we faces the challenge squarely. We are not running away from it. Uh, we have a better program for the people and about the people and ready to serve. He moved from there to the palace of the Emir of Daura, Alaji Farouk Kumar Farouk. <laughs> the All Progressives Congress is now saddled with the task of ensuring that the Tinubu Shetima ticket becomes a victory come 2023 presidential election. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Katsina. Joining us to discuss uh, this uh, emergence of the former Borono State Governor Kashim Shetima as Achiwaju Tinubu's running mate. Now we have in the studio APC uh, Chief Chain Ayodele Adewale. Welcome to the program. It's good to see thank, you again. Thank you for having me. Okay. And uh, joining us from our Abuja studio is the coordinator, Tinubu Support Group uh, in Bielsa State, Prince Sepitimi Angbari. It's good to have you join us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Yeah, a bit in me, this is Samo Um How did you receive the news of um, Kashim Shetima as the running mate to Ashura Jibola Ahmed Tinubu? With gladness, because it's uh, well thought out. Well thought out because uh, for us, the. Yeah. Well thought out, and we received it with gladness because. Uh, we trusted the judgment of our leader, and we knew that he would come up with the best of decisions. And this judgment for us is good to go. Good to go. All right, let me throw the question to Mr. Adewale here in, in the studio. <clears throat> we heard Ashiwaju and um, speak about the fact that when announcing uh, Mr. Shetima, Senator Shetima, he said he wasn't, he hadn't even been told. And we had seen the Borono State former governor, you know, a, always present at all of the nationwide tours that Ashiwaju made before his emergence as the presidential flag bearer. You know, in assessing your reaction to his emergence, uh, how do you weigh all this? You see, one of the very most important thing in choosing uh, your your 
your comrade, as, 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 as the case is now, is, 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 uh, is uh, his deputy, is for you to choose somebody who you really understand, who you have worked with, who knows your thinking, and who knows the plan. Uh, you said it quite frankly that during the, um, the build up to the uh, presidential convention, that uh, so actually you are the standard bearer of the party, is part of the inner circle that midwife all the plans and, of course, actioned it. So it's not a surprise that he has won that uh, spot in the heart of Aswaju, despite the fact that he had not been told. Remember, it was on this show that I did mention about three of them that are likely to, to win that position. And uh, Aswaju has made the best choice, uh, also looking at his track record. Uh, Mr. Shatima is from the academic environment, hasn't been a lecturer before, and uh, is also from the um, entrepreneurial banking sector. Uh, he understands business very well. He understands how to, how to raise funds, and Nigeria needs someone with that capacity so that we can stop a borrowing. And having been a governor of Bonu State, one of the most troublesome, worrisome state in terms of insurgency. He understands the, 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 the rudiments of, of making sure that uh, tranquility, safety, security is achieved. Uh, don't also be quick to forget that there have always been a germane discussion on state policing and how to effectively police our environment. Uh, he created the, the civilian JTF during this time. Asuaju likewise created the RRS. Uh, regardless of the fact that uh, they don't have that uh, enormity as it is now in rea social reality uh, in, within the Nigerian contradiction. Mm. So having these two square pegs, I think the issue of security will be tackled very well. And I think we should be looking at having state secure I and mean, state police as they come into office by the grace of God. And uh, I, I think Nigeria will be better off having the two of them as a team. All right, let's put you on hold and, and get back uh, to uh, our guest in Abuja. Uh, um, uh, a bit to me, some people have said, oh, this is a Muslim, Muslim ticket, and therefore it does not really reflect uh, the Nigerian diversity. How do you respond to that? I will come from three perspectives. Let me first of all talk about the historical perspective. 30 years ago, we had the opportunity to solve a major problem. The SDP, the leadership of the SDP in 1993 decided to tackle this evil. One of the evils, one of the main evils bedeviling this nation, religion, the issue of religion. They came together and picked two of their own as two Muslims to run for the presidential ticket. Late Basharu M. Kewabiola and Ambassador Babagana Kingibe. They wanted to solve a problem. They went to the market with, this, with, this, with their candidates. They sold them to the Nigerian public. The Nigerian, Nigerian public bought the candidates. The results of June 12 showed clearly that Nigerians wanted to end, put an end to this, this, this evil called religion. The, the enemy came up through the military to annul that election. Today, faith has brought another opportunity for us to address this, this issue once and for all. The strong, some of the strong men of that era are still alive. And we have Bagana Kingibe. We also have Ashwaji Bolame who was a front runner in that, in that era. Today, he is the flag bearer. And he has the opportunity to fix this problem. And I'm very sure, very, very sure, that we will go to the market again. We will sell it to Nigerians, and Nigerians will buy it. Because we have heard people already, since yesterday, I've heard many people say, who religion help? Now, who religion help? People know that religion is not our problem. Now, the second perspective will be, who is the man making this nomination? Can you fault Ashwaju along the lines of religion? You can fault him, 
the records are there to speak for him. Lagos today, every year, organizes the annual Thanksgiving service. Papa, Papa Adeboye is the one that preaches most times. And this is, this is happening every year. Every year in Lagos. We, we initiated that. Asuwajibola Metinebu. I tell people, especially those who are shouting, you don't need to shout. Mm. We have an Esther in the house. Senator Remy Tinibu is a pastor. When you have an Esther in the house, you know that the Jews will never be consumed. A man's better half is a Christian. Mm. And you, you want to condemn that man that is a it, that is, is, not sen is not religious sensitive. That's not true. The, who is, the next leg is, who is the man that he is nominating? Mm. Shetima's record is also there. The current president, or the current chairman mm. in Borno State, Naga Williams Mohammed, Bishop Naga Williams Mohammed, said that in his time as governor, the Christians in Borno State enjoyed they enjoyed his support. He was always there for them. It's also on record that the, in his government, he followed the footpath of Ashwajo Bola Metinibu, what Ashwajo did in Lagos. He nominated Christians to serve in his cabinet. And if you know the man, uh, Senator Shetima, is a liberal person, very liberal person. So we should not talk about, for I don't say, I'm a Christian. I'm a dickhead for that, uh, for that matter. But I am a liberal Christian. And all liberal Christians will embrace this ticket. Only those who hold on to religion and put it as slates on their, on their neck will want to, and of course, they are not sincere about it. It will be clear that they are not sincere about it. So we, we, we don't see this ticket as faulty in any way. Still with you, uh, Prince Angbare. So we'll be seeing more of uh, Senator Shetima now, of course, as he continues to now crisscross or, or, or resume crisscrossing at the country now, selling the Tinubu Shetima ticket. Uh, but um, his strides as governor in Borno State has now been revived. People weighing how he fared and how relevant he will be to proffering solutions to national problems at this time. What do you have to say in this regard? He fared well. He fared well as the governor. He introduced the civilian JTF, and which is what most governors are asking for today. You know, he understands the problem of insurgency. He was in the middle, he was in the middle of it. And uh, his background as an agroeconomist clearly puts him in a good position to work. And of course, his rich experience coming from the, from, uh, the banking industry puts him, you know, makes him to fit the bill of, uh, of a vice president. The major responsibility, the constitutional role of a vice president is, is to manage the economy. So he is well prepared, well suited to walk into that office and hit the ground running from day one. You know, so he, he for, you cannot fault him when you, come, when, you, when you talk about competence. You cannot also fault him when you talk about a politician. You know, you can't fault him as a politician. He's a, he's a team player. He, he, we, I mean, we were together when we had, uh, during this, he was always with, with us here in Abuja. You know, how you'll see him relate with people down to head, come down to their level. Of course, you know he's a young man. He fits into that age bracket of a youth. So he comes down to that level, talks with people, stand for hours to engage people, talk with people. So it's somebody who is fit to play this role, to play that complementary, to give Ashwaji Bola Metinubu that complementary role. Mr. Adewale, so what do you make, make of this? So security, of course, will continue to be uh, at the front burner, even in campaigns when the window uh, officially opens. But for us, you know, down south or further south, um, how do you think um, Senator Shetima will fare selling this ticket, this joint ticket? Well, 
It's very advantageous because he is coming from a society whereby everybody is on guard and uh, security is their main business there. But like I said, he has been able to think out of the box to create an auxiliary that the Nigerian military have used to understand the terrain. Uh, the only reason why America lost in the, in the Vietnam War was that they don't understand the terrain very well and they could not really apply their system and technology there. So you have someone that understands its terrain, understands what insecurity is, and understand how to tackle it using local intelligence. And like I said, Asuaji also created the RRS at a time where Lagos was bedeviled with a lot of crime. He couldn't control the police directly, but creating that structure, they were able to fund it. Not just funding it with the IGR and federal allocation, they created a separate stream of funding yeah. that made it very independent. So by the time you blend these two thoughts together, we are moving towards state police, either we like it or not. You understand? And I can tell you that when the issue of the state police come again to the National Assembly, they are going to have full support of the executive, and we are moving towards solving insecurity. People have um, talked about um, Ashwajo's um, liberalism, but, but in a, in a society where we have a lot of um, uh, bigotry here and there, you know, we, we forget to talk about the virtue. I want to talk about the virtue of having two liberal human beings who have um, worked with corporations who have come with ideas and who have moved around the country. Well, like Shetima. Shetima, for instance, who, there was um, a, what do you call it? There was a, 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 a seminar once organized in, in Lagos here, where there was J.P. Clark and all of them, and then just he, he, he stood up and started reeling out the works of J.P. Clark. This is a businessman, a man with corporate experience, talking about, talking about OZD, talking about about uh, his plays and poems and so on and so forth. Now. Talk about the blending of these two personalities and what kind of Nigeria that itself can create. Well, it is true that Ashwaju is liberal, but also don't forget that uh, he has a left bend. He's bent towards the left. And uh, while growing up, he was not born with a silver spoon. He actually grew, you understand, within all the social contradiction that you have in Nigeria. So he understand the middle class, he understand the lower class, and of course, uh, the upper, uh, that some people will term as, as the bourgeoisie and all of that. So he understands, and he speak various language towards their interest. Now, the other person, Mr. Shatima, also understand these things very well to have excel in his uh, academic uh, activity, especially to have schooled in the West, University of Ibadan, for that matter. Yes. It's no pushover. Mm -hmm. And of course, he schooled, I mean, he lived his life in Lagos. Lagos. So he understands the hustles and bustle. It's not as if he met one family inheritance and yes. he became a spoiled child and grew into, uh, into, into a lot of abundance. These people walked their way up. And became an academic. Mm -hmm. You understand? They walked their way up. So they mixed with different uh, interest groupings within the society. And they've not cut themselves all out of social realities. So this... Uh, social realities we put on the table, bringing friends together, bringing heggeds together, and I sure you know how to hunt for heggeds in order to move systems forward. Let's get to uh, back to Prince uh, Ambere, uh, who is standing by for us in uh, Abuja. So two questions for you uh, rolled up into one. First is you head uh, the Bayosa support group uh, for, of course, in support of um, the Ashiwaju, now the Ashiwaju Shetima ticket. So what's the party likely to get from the South-South? Of course, um, it's a game of numbers and these are political implications. So that's on the one hand, uh, the South-South, uh, how this would add up for uh, the gains, as gains for the APC. And on the other hand, we've seen how the emergence of an Atiku Okoa ticket has created upset substantially in the camp of Governor Wiki. How do we, or how is the party now going to dance around the issue of the fact that, you know, some other, you know, contenders 
weren't picked, Governor El Rufai, uh, uh, for example. How, how is the party going to ensure that all, all hands are on deck to support uh, the Ashiwa Jutinobu Shetima ticket? Thank you. We went into town as early as yesterday to, to start the job of marketing the joint tickets of Ashiwa Jubola, Metinibu, and Shetima. And I can tell you that the response is good. We have not, we are just yet to, to hit the ground, but the response that we are getting, it's very, very good. And we are going to go into the nooks and the crannies because what people are looking at is basically performance. They know the records of these two leaders and they know, they see the combination as unique, okay? And so nobody is going to talk about religion. And especially, also, you talked about South-South. Our daughter is the wife, is the next first lady by the grace of God. So that gives us that comfort that we have our daughter in the house, who is a Christian. You know, and you know when the mother is in the house, you know the benefits of having the mother in the house. You won't be hungry. The kitchen will always be there for you. We will always access the kitchen. So these people of South South know that we will access the kitchen without problem. You understand? So for us in South South, it's our business. It's our matter. Religion is secondary. Because we know that I, I told you earlier, I made one, 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 uh, one quote earlier. Somebody said, Will religion help? That is what has been happen, flying from the social media since last night. Will religion help? You know, so we are going to take this message to the nooks and crannies of the creeks. And we will make sure that by the grace of God, we do the needful. And it will not be difficult to sell this ticket in the in, in South South. Mr. Adewale, so like I said earlier, Ona, like you, you know it's politics is a game of numbers. The APC has expressed way before now its desire to win um, this, you know, realistically speaking and looking at all the realities on ground. But okay, so the, the North now will be a, a factor now. Some have posited that the North, how will the APC now, you know, swing the votes in its favor? There is article in the PDP because there's a southeast uh, you know implications as to this is the APC sure of its footing in the southeast we've asked about the south south dimensions and even in the southwest too there is also you know some considerable attention as to how all this nationwide will add up you know for the APC in talking about numbers aside from Lagos and the southwest one of the biggest stronghold of the APC, of course, is the North in terms of geopolitical placing. President Buhari has his numbers. If you have watched the trajectory of all the votes, right from when he started contesting, the numbers have been there. Mr. Shatima has his number. Mr. Zulum has his number. You understand? You also have other allies from the Sokoto enclave, the Kaduna, and all the way down to Kogi. They have their numbers. When you come to the east, the numbers are adding up. And the south-south, they are also adding up. Regardless of whether you have governors of those areas, but those nuclear structures are going to add up. You're going to take them in bits and pieces and capitalize on the crisis within the PDP. Because again, they are not truthful to themselves. Unlike the Asuaju's picking of his candidate, he sat down, consulted. That was why the placeholder thing was there, to give him more opportunity to consult and aggregate all of those consultations into strength. So people have been discussed you think with. The, 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 the Tinubu factor or the Tinubu Shetima factor would give uh, the party a better uh, outing as against the 5% it's recorded in the Southeast, for example, it at the last it, election. It makes it power more. It makes it power more and all that. They've, they've told you about the Shekiri nation. I'm also Shekiri, partly. My great grandmother is Shekiri from the Boyos. 
So you I are never knew her. that. I never yeah, knew well, that. From too. the boys, mm. my auntie is uh, Auntie Helen that married Dr. Alex Akwame, the former vice president, mm. and all of that. You understand? Those factors will come in. I know a lot of friends that were in NANS together. They are in the PDP and they are reaching out. That look, we are going to work for your father. We are going to work for your boss, and all of that. So you are going to see these nucleus structures all coming out because they know under Suaju's presidency, Nigeria will be greater. Now, I want you to, to look at this issue of um, the, the role of uh, religion, what both of them have done in their own areas. Like, like you know, I read uh, earlier um, the confessions of um, the, the, um, the, um, the, the can, can, the can the chairman uh, in uh, Borno State while uh, Shetima was uh, governor. And then what uh, Ashiwaju also did there. And it, it looks like some of the things these Muslim candidates have done, many Christian stalwarts in politics cannot even hold their finger to it. I'll give you an example. I went to St. Gregory's College. It's a Christian Catholic school. Mm. When Ashwaju came in, he had promised them before becoming governor that he was going to return mission schools back to missionaries. A lot of people didn't believe, but he went ahead to return it. Many Christian governors couldn't, even till now. And those mission schools have done better because they've been giving back to their owners and all of that. You see it about trust. The man from um, uh, uh, South Aditse talked about Ashwaju establishing the yearly Thanksgiving service, service that have always been led by Pastor Adiboye and all of that. Till date, it has become an institution in Lagos. And some other states are borrowing from it. That was done by a Muslim. So Ashwaju is not, is not a religious by God. He's very liberal. He believes that everybody come along, let's build society together, and hold on to your beliefs. All right. OK, so uh, I don't know if we have you know, some more time now to get uh, final takes from uh, you both, beginning with uh, Prince Angbari in Abuja. Let's talk about some other present-day realities, like the power of social media. Uh, for the Labour Party, for example, now it's been said that that has been to the advantage, with the, the substantive running mate of the party even going as far as saying that this time around, despite speculation, South, the social media will vote. How are you viewing this trend as to how it could even favor the APC? We, we are strong, too, in the social media. And uh, we will do better as, as, as we go into the main uh, season of campaign. We are strong. We are doing well. And uh, we're, we're ready to win at the level of social media and be ready to also win in the field. So we're going to, we're leaving no stone unturned. We will, we will be there for them and we'll, they will know that we are ready for them. We will, there is no way they will beat us in, in the social media. So, they, but they must be ready to also come to the field. Mm. What do you think, Mr. Adibali? But social media right. doesn't vote. <laughs> social media is very important. <laughs> they vote. It's very, they so? are human beings that are there. I'm on social media. You're on social media. We have our voters cards. But did they vote in 2019? They yeah, voted. Right. How? Don't, don't be skewed. Don't be skewed by the narrative that people in social media don't vote. They are human beings. Yes, a lot of them might be throwing tantrums and all of that, but the reality is that they are passing information. And those informations are very good. Are also helping to gauge. And also help, you understand, right. to gauge the system and, of course, build the system. So in 2023 or even in the build-up now, are we, going, are we seeing a smooth flow? Or what's your observation so far? Ashwaji is on social media. Go and check his Instagram mm -hmm. page and some other things. He believes in technology. He had worked within that environment. And he worked with a lot of youth. So technology is very important as we move forward, especially for INEC. We are going to see. God willing, under Aswaju's leadership, that INEC are going to be well funded. We are going to have an opportunity to be registering seamlessly without going to queue. Perhaps before the end of his eight year term, we are going to have a situation whereby people in the diaspora will also be voting as Nigerians here. A situation whereby you can vote with your phones, you can mail your votes, and your vote will count where all the Iraqis that have surrounded electoral processes, we become a thing of the past. 
These are what technology under the Asuaju leadership will gain for Nigeria and Nigerians. All right, gentlemen, uh, a safe place, uh, like our man Kelly would say, a safe place to rest our, our discussion at this time. Uh, Prince Ebiti Miangwari, the uh, Bielsa State Coordinator of the Tinubu Support Group, we say a big thank you for your contributions on the program. And, of course, uh, we cannot uh, thank you. but also thank uh, you, Mr. Adewali Ayodili Adewali. Thank you so much for always been there. In, Thank you in, for the privilege. In, in, in.